potion He still had plenty notes left to play Not a friend or a wife But something from the ocean Could give him the will to stay All the intense scrutiny And crazy pressure Resulted in a desperate plea So by summoning the will Of this red companion He could do it all of me because of me white and black keys are played with ease the memories which used to tease no longer dissect him This crustacean's job is to just regulate the flow, so it's all the go. But this was devotion, not quite from the ocean, but ensuring motion and the pickling of the eyes. And so the group with these are used to please the end of these one bows from the waist and obsess him. Dirty work. Offering of no resistance, making sure one and one or two. Though the calm on his face is due to my assistance, I do not want the credit due. As the notes and the chords light up the arena, it's not the stand light that helps you see. The repose on the stage is pure fabrication. Despite castration, all thanks to this plastic crustacean, he achieves it all because of me. Tied to the wall with a kinky, twisty, three and a half foot cord. It's hard to believe, but had a ring that could not be turned off or ignored. We couldn't choose the sound of the ring, it was just the sound we called the phone. We never heard of a ringtone. When I was your age, our video games looked nothing like the illustration on the box. All of the graphics consisted of nothing more than simple lines and dots. Missiles were just a few pixels, and the jungle swinging guy was a stick figure. Nothing bigger. When I was your age. When I was your age. We had this stuff called film you would stick in a camera before you took a shot. And 
then you have to wait like a week until you can tell what pictures you got. You would hand the film to a guy in a parking lot who lived in a booth. You had to wait till the movie was either in the theater or on TV. You couldn't rent an adventure if you wanted an adventure. You just had to wait and see. And once you were watching, you couldn't stop or pause or even try to rewind. But we didn't mind. When I was your age. Singing from the stage Hello, internets. Hey, it's Friday, February 4th. It's the 4th, right? It's the 4th. Hi, I'm George Robb. Welcome to another episode of uh, Seven Songs with me. What are the odds, huh? What are the odds? Uh, tonight's a very fun, special, challenging kind of episode. Uh, I know we're like a minute early, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blather for a minute or two. Imagine that. I'm just going to talk off the cuff for a minute or two until our little room is full of everyone who's going to be hanging out. I hope you're all good. I hope you're all happy. Uh, today's, today's theme is, oh my gosh, Antonio Carlos Jobim. Jobim. It's not Joe Beam. I know people... That's the joke, right? Yeah, there's that composer. Beam. Hey, Joe. Joe Beam. He writes them bossa novas over there. Uh, is Jobim. Jobim. Jobim, I think, is actually how you say it in Portuguese. I'm not even sure the pronunciation. I'm. Uh, if you don't know who he is, uh, shame, because you should. Uh, he famously, most famously, is the composer of the song Girl from Ipanema. He is the father of Bossa Nova. And I was hard-pressed to think of another artist, and not just musician, but... but Artist in general, the only thing, the only one I came up with was uh, Jackson Pollock, who is so completely tied to a genre, so 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 enmeshed within the d definition of a genre, like Jobim and Bossa Nova. He 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 essentially not only popularized it, but was amazing at it. Was kind of the first to do it. And no one has ever really done it as well as he ever did it. And I was trying to think, like, is there, you know, because for every musician that, that sort of is within a genre, there's always like two or three that are as good or come afterwards and sort of enhance. And in terms of bossa nova, popular across the planet, I'm sure there are, I mean, there are fabulous bossa nova artists. Um, but in terms of popular, in terms of people that really uh, are synonymous with the genre that they've created or that they're involved in, let alone created. Maybe Jackson Pollock. 
you know, the pointillism thing. Like, like maybe, because I, like, you know, name another, not pointillism, uh, the, the dripping, drippy paint thing. Name another artist who's sort of synonymous, like, did that as well. You know, it's like, who's the second best writer of bossa novas? It's like there isn't one. So, uh, Antonio Carlos Brasileiro de Almeida Jobim was born in January uh, of 1927. He died in 1994. He was also known as Tom Jobim. Tom, for some reason. He was a composer, pianist, guitarist, songwriter, arranger, and singer. In the 50s, along with poet Vincius de Marais and vocalist, guitarist, Jao Gilberto, he created the style that we know as Bossa Nova. Um, he helped export it through... Uh, uh, Stan, uh, an album with Stan Getz in the 60s and an album with Frank Sinatra. Those two albums are essential listenings. Getz, Gilberto, and uh, uh, I think the other one's called Francis Albert Sinatra and Antonio Carlos Jobim. And they are absolutely genre-defining, timeless, wonderful records. In 1965, uh, the Getz, Gilberto album was the first jazz album to win a Grammy Award for Album of the Year. Isn't that weird? I, I figured there'd be all kinds of jazz Grammys before then, like in the 50s and 40s and stuff. But no, it's the first jazz album to win Album of the Year. And it had the song that I'm going to start with, which is the most, probably most famous song of his, which unfortunately has become synonymous with elevator music. It's the song Girl from Ipanema. Girl from Ipanema is from 1965. Uh, you all know this tune. It's the thing, whenever there's a scene of people getting on an elevator the elevator doors open up and there's the music muzak version and people look at each other awkwardly because you know the guy with the gun is waiting to get to the floor so he can kill the person or whatever and it's become this trope it's become this trope of oh kind of cheesy kind of muzak elevator and it's it's such a gorgeous song. I'm going to play it so we can get some music happening up front here. I'll talk a little bit more about it afterwards. And let me just say up front, I apologize for my Portuguese, but I wanted to do it somewhat authentically. So we're going to give it a shot. This is uh, from 1965. It was the Grammy record of the year, as well as off the album of the year for 1965, jazz album of the year. No, sorry, just regular album of the year, not even jazz album of the year. Album of the year. Uh, the Portuguese lyrics are by Vincius de Moraes, and the English lyrics were written by Norman Gimbel. And here's a little taste. Here it is, The Girl from Ipanema. <laughs> Coisa mais linda, mais cheia de graça Menina que vem, que passa Só dol balançado Caminho do mar Moço do corpo dourado Do sol de panima Você balançado É mais que um poema É coisa mais linda Que eu já vi passar Porque estou tão sozinho. Ah, porque tudo tão triste. Ah, a beleza que existe. A beleza que não é chaumina. Que também passa a sozinha. Se ela soubesse que quando ela passa O um mundo bitterinho se este graça E fica mais linda por causa do amor Tall and tan and young and lovely The girl from Ipanema goes walking And when she passes each one she passes goes When she walks, it's like a samba that swings so cool and sways so gentle. And when she passes, each one she passes goes. Ah. Oh, but I watch her so sadly. I would give 
give my heart gladly. But each day as she walks to the sea, she looks straight ahead, not at me. I'm tall and tan and young and lovely. The girl from Ipanema goes walking and when she passes I smile, but she doesn't see. She just doesn't see. No, she does not see. It's such a it's such a crazy, sultry, beautiful, sexy kind of all these tunes. There is a the only word I could think of is alchemy. There's this alchemy happening between the relationship of the melody and the chords. Now, what makes let's go to this camera over here. Let's go to this smaller one here just to get intimate for a second, since we're gonna be talking about sexy chords. What makes a Jobim song a Jobim song? Because there's definitely a thing. There's definitely a thing that's going on. And in the macro, it is a combination of simple melodies with complex harmonic structure. And then complex melodies with simple harmonic structure. So there's that. He's taking sort of this idea of like folk tunes that are very simple. And even, even distilled folk tunes. But then providing very complex underpinning harmonic structure that uses a lot of parallel half-step motion. What does that mean? We have a lot of, just in this the Girl from Ipanema, it's a perfect example, where you have, you know, we're sort of an F, F major chord, right? F major seven. So it's not just an F chord, it's an F major seven. So it has that lovely, that lovely E in there. So you get this nice, that's your F. Up a half step ah, for the bridge, da -da -bee, ba -ba -ba -ba. and then so you get these kind of motion, half step motion, ah, up a half step, up a half step, down a half step. He loves he loves using these kind of structures of so just in just in Ipanema, F major seven to G. That's a step, and then we go. G minor to down a half step and then back down another half step, right? So these like almost like metal riffs, right? But they're just so pretty because the harmonic structure of it allows it to sort of just lie in this sultry, sultry, singable bed. Um, one thing that I had no concept was the most famous recording of this is um, uh, what's her name? Oh, this song is, is the second most recorded song after Yesterday by the Beatles, by the way, Girl from Ipanema. So um, Astrid Gilberto, who was the sax player's wife, uh, sings this song. The most famous version of this is Astrid Gilberto singing it. And she had never recorded a song before. It was the first th Yeah, she had never recorded a song before. Ms. Info's jaw just dropped on the floor. She sings this thing, and it's amazing. And I guess she sang non-professionally or whatever. It was supposed to be um, Sarah Vaughn was supposed to sing it. And and both uh, 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 Getz and, and Jobim were like, um, yeah, you're, like, your wife is amazing. She should so totally sing it. And so she sings it. It's the first record. Like, is there a more impressive first recording ever? Crazy. All right. That's the girl from Ipanema. Oh, and there's there's a, there's alternate words with boy from Ipanema, which is interesting. Um, but the but so there's a line. Each time when she walks to the sea, she looks straight ahead, not at he. Which like doesn't quite work. So they change it to each time she goes for a swim, she looks straight ahead, not at him. I like that. I like that. But these words, yeah. Um, each day when she walks to the sea, she looks straight ahead, not at me. I love I love the kind of pining nature of, of 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 the lyric. So, um, cool. We're gonna go to song number two. Which is another one that I wasn't quite aware of um, what the title 
was. I sort of knew but didn't know. This is called, uh, the original title is Corcovado. And it's called Quiet Nights of Quiet Stars. This is from 1960. Uh, the English lyrics are by Gene Lees. We'll have Gene Lees later. Interestingly enough, Gene Lee wrote a lot of the American, uh, American, a lot of the English lyrics for Jobim tunes. But Gene Lee was from Hamilton, Canada, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Um, he used to write for Downbeat magazine, and at one point he translated the poems of Pope John Paul II in a book. Um, so you have this Canadian guy who's translating Pope songs, who also then writes the English versions of these tunes, which is a, it's a delicate skill. So um, Corcovado, which literally means hunchback in Portuguese, Corcovado is the mountain that the big Jesus is on. The big, the big uh, uh, what's it called? The uh, Christ, Christ, Jesus. yeah, not, it's not Touchdown Jesus. Touchdown Jesus is a yell. This is with the hands out. This is Christ the Redeemer. This is that gigantic Christ the Redeemer statue is on this mountain, and that mountain's called Corcovado because it's this big hump. In the Andes. It's not the Andes. No, it's it's in Rio. Ah. I believe it's in Rio, right? Yeah, in Rio. In, in Brazil. In Brazil, in Rio. So the Spanish, the Spanish, sort of the English translation of the Portuguese lyrics is this, a corner and a guitar, this love, a song to make the one you love happy, very calm to think, and you have time to dream. From the window, you can see the Corcovado, the Redeemer, how beautiful. I want life always like this, with you close to me, until the old flame goes out. I was sad, a disbeliever of this world. When I found you, I met what happiness is, my love. What is happiness? What is happiness? It's a somewhat, and the English, you'll hear the English lyrics, because I'll do the English lyrics in the, in the Quiet Nights version. And there is a certain kind of sadness to it, of like, I found you, and I basically want to end my days with you, which is kind of cool. So um, here it is from, was it 1960? Yeah, 1960. And it's, it's just, it's just, again, so pretty. Uses these lovely diminished chords. <laughs> There's these, uses these lovely diminished chords all over the place. So here it is, Quiet Nights of Quiet Stars, or Corcovado. was lost and lonely believing life was only a bitter joke have found with you the meaning of existence oh my love was love. 
lost and lonely Believing life was only A bitter tragic joke have found in you The meaning of existence You get these records, you put them on, and whoever's in the room basically ends up naked somehow. I'm not even sure <laughs> how it works, but it's just, they're just, it, it is absolute alchemy. It's just, it's, it's absolute alchemy. So again, here's a very simple melody, very da-da-da-da-da-da-da. two notes, ba-da-da-ba-da-da-da, but you have this da-da-da-da-da-da-da. This A flat diminished. Da, 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 da. It's just like, ah. Oh. So it's this like tension and release. And this tension and release. That's what it is. It's like the it's like there's this implied pumping. <laughs> So it's so great, it's so great. Ah, now this next one, I just let me say a couple things before I jump forward. Um, it is, I think she's in the chat. I'm hoping she's there. It's Rice's birthday she today. Is. Oh, please throw some Bonita. potatoes, throw some potatoes and some hearts at Raisa, Raisa Michelle. It's her birthday. Um, happy birthday, Raisa. What a way to spend your birthday with us over here. Everyone, please raise a glass. Feliz cumpleaños. Is that the right? Yeah, that's the right thing. I'll, I'll toast my um, Whirlers fruit punch and club soda to Risa. Yay. Easy tiger. Mm -hmm. Next Friday, the 11th, is my last official gig with PFA. If you're in town, come on around to the uh, Music Fest Cafe. I think it's 8 o'clock, I think. I'm not sure what time, but something like that. That's going to be a wonderful time. Um, then, the following weekend, the 18th of February, I actually have a solo gig at the Crossroads Tavern. I'll be doing cover cover songs, cover tunes, 7 to 11 at Crossroads there in Percasy. Uh, I just booked this thing. It's like my first non-PFA solo gig booking thing, which is very exciting. And then, on March uh, 5th, I'm going to be at Godfrey Daniels. I have a little Godfrey Daniels gig doing my original stuff. I'm doing a show called Words and Music. It's a little show I put together, which is my originals plus some essays and things like that. It's called Words and Music. That's, that is March 5th. Uh, and yeah, cool. Happy birthday, Raisa. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, the next tune is uh, a song called How Insensitive. How Insensitive. This is from 1963. Um, the Portuguese lyrics, again, are, are by uh, De Moraes, and the English lyrics are by Norman Gimbel. In, in, the original title is Insensatez, which translates more accurately to foolishness. Okay, foolishness. Now... Here's the melody of how. Here's the first first eight bars. The melody of how uh, of how insensitive. Okay, talk about simple, simple melody. basically and then half step motion A to A to B flat and then G to A like so again one two three four one two three four one two okay more interesting in the back here Crazy, nothing crazy, a plaintiff little happy melody. But now you combine that with what the bass note's doing. And it's not the chords, but just what the bass 
of the chord structure is happening, and the bass is doing this essentially. Okay, chromatic motion, steps down, D, C sharp, C, B, A sharp, D sharp, okay, you put them together, and, and it's magic. It's, it's, it's magic. It's apps because it's now becomes this sonata. And so much so that it's very similar or inspired by a Chopin prelude, the E minor uh, number four, which, which, pardon my horrendous piano playing, but you probably know it this way. That's the, that's the Chopin prelude. <laughs> right? Which is, again, sim similar idea. Simple, gorgeous. Simple, gorgeous. That's just the first, first eight bars, not even, first six bars. So, um... Again, words are beautiful, and I just, I could play this all day long because it makes me so happy. Here it is, how insensitive. And it's not that the chords are moving. It's not that. It's you have this D minor, and then you have an A with a C sharp in the bass. And then you have a C minor. So it's just, it's super clever and super dense and just gorgeous. Here it is. How insensitive. How insensitive I must have seemed when she told me that she loved me. Must have seemed when she told me so sincerely. Why she must have asked, did I just turn and stare in icy silence? Why was I to say? can one say when a love affair is over? Now she's gone away and I'm alone with the memory of her last look. Vague and drawn and sad I see it still, all that heartbreak of her last look. How she must have asked, could I just turn and stare in icy silence? What was I to say? What can one say when a love affair is over? Now 
gone away And I'm alone with the memory of her last look Vague and drawn and sad I see it still All the heartbreak of her last look Why she must have asked Did I just turn and stare in icy silence was I to do? What can you do when a love affair is over? When a love affair is over? When a love affair is over? Again, it's it's just it's absolutely it's so pretty and so dense and simple and gorgeous all at the same time. I don't know how he does it. Really, 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 really fun. Yeah, that was three. Now, apparently, as samba was a uh, samba, as bossa nova was getting sort of more and more popular, there were detractors, especially Brazilian composers who were saying, this music is too simple. It's too simple. It's too, it's, the melodies are too simple. You know, like, um, Jobim is just, he's, he's sort of having fun with us because this should be more complex. The, the history of Brazilian uh, folk songs are more complex melodically than what he's sort of doing. So, so as a joke almost, they wrote, uh, he, uh, uh, he and... Um, Met, uh, the, the lyricist wrote this next song which is called One Note Samba and you, you think you can't get any simpler than well the melody of this next song is A, there was a, a critic called Ari Barroso who said, like, it's, the, the writing is too simple. So to kind of mock him and say, oh, you want simple writing? Here's simple writing. They wrote this. It's called One Note Samba. Now, the bridge has a lovely, melodic, interesting thing that happens. It's kind of much more complex. Um, but also vigorously defended the sanctity of the samba and was perhaps the only Brazilian composer from the old guard who never flirted with foreign rhythms. He had this thing called Exaltation Samba, and he was like, it's got to stay pure. You're writing too simply. So they ended up writing this song, which is called One Note Samba. So listen for the melody. It's really fun. Sinatra's version of this is wonderful. He kind of takes it slow, much slower than a samba should be, but it's kind of still cool anyway. So here it is from 1959. still that note. Now this new note is the consequence of the ones that we've been through. As I'm bound to be the unavoidable consequence of you. There's so many people who can talk and talk and talk and just say nothing, nearly nothing. I have used up all the scales I know and in the end I've come to nothing. I mean nothing. So I come back to my first note as I must come back to you. I will pour into that one note all the love I feel for you. Anyone who wants the whole show like do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, he will find himself with no show. Better play the note you know. Samba built on a 
single note Other notes are sure to follow But this note is still that note Now this new note is the consequence of the ones that we've been through As I'm bound to be the unavoidable consequence of you There's so many people who can talk and talk and talk and just say nothing I've used up all the scales I know, and in the end I've come to nothing. I mean nothing. So I come back to my first note, as I must come back to you. I will pour into that one note all the love I feel for you. Anyone who wants the whole show, do re mi fa sol la ti do. He will find himself a no-show. Better play the note you know. Better play the note you know. Better play the note you know. Isn't it fun? It's so fun. That's the most elegant flipping of the bird. Seriously, right? Yeah, yeah. You want you want something? Here you go. Here, here's, a, here's a simple melody for you. But again, what's happening is the chords are, the chords are descending by half steps. D minor 7 to a D flat 7 with that F still in it. And then a C minor with that F still in it, and then a B7. So. And yet the whole time. Really cool. And then. Simple, but not, but awesome. Oops. And so now we go from the simplest melody to perhaps one of the most complex. This is a song called Desafinado. Let's go over here, actually. This is, this is, I think this is one of my favorites, actually. Not just of Jobim's, but in general. There's something about this song. I think I have a connection. It, years ago, I was in a little swing band. It was called Mood Swings. That was with my good friend Nick Roberti um, from college. Nick, the amazing Nick bass player, super friendly, incredibly talented guy. We had this little five piece called Mood. We were like we were like three, two to three years before the big swing thing that happened in the '90s, before uh, before uh, the jump swing revival. Remember for a while, like you know, all those bands were doing. You had the guy from Stray Cats, and like we were like like we we were ahead of the curve by like two years, maybe like eighteen months. But one of the songs we did was Desafinado, which I didn't really know. And then Nick had written such a wonderful arrangement of it, and I just. I fell in love with it. I absolutely fell in love with it. And as I got to be a better piano player and guitarist and could actually play the correct chords, I just discovered how gorgeous this song really actually is and what's going on inside of it. So desafinado uh, means uh, um, off key or out of tune. It's, it's, all, it's, called, it's also called slightly out of tune. And there's two English version, two English lyric versions, which I wasn't aware of. There's the one by John Hendricks that I'm going to do, but then there's the one by Gene Lees, the Canadian guy who translated for the Pope. And I got to say, for as much as I love Gene Lees' lyrics, I didn't, I don't like these. I like the John Hendricks lyrics much better. So, um, This also was a response, a little bit of a joke. Desafinado was originally a response to critics who claimed that bossa nova was a new genre for, for singers who can't sing. So Jovim was like, oh, okay. So there's these wonderful chromaticisms in here. The melody, the melody starts like this. Right, so we're kind of like in C almost. Right? Major chord, fine. But it goes. Right? And then. Crazy jump. Right? There's your there's your easy bossa nova song that anybody can sing, right? So again. What? 
Um, so cool. Again, chords are really interesting and they're sort of doing this half step motion and now he's writing these more complex melodies again just to mess with his critics where he's like, no, I can do whatever I want to do and it's just as great. Let me quickly read the Gene Lee's lyrics, which I don't like as much. Um, if you say my singing is off key, my love, you will hurt my feelings, don't you see, my love? I wish I had an ear like yours, a voice that would behave. All I have is feeling and the voice God gave. You insist my music goes against the rules. Yes, but rules were never made for lovesick fools. I wrote this little song for you, but you don't care. It's a crooked song, but my heart is there. Eh, the thing that you would see if you would play your part is even if I'm out of tune, I have a gentle heart. Now here's like the worst line of the whole thing. I took your picture with my trusty Rolleiflex, and now I have developed something that's complex. <laughs> Possibly in vain, not, not dated at all, because we all have our, we still have our Rolleiflex cameras that we all use. Uh, possibly in vain, I hope you'll weaken, blah, 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 it goes on and on and on and on and on. That was not nearly as cool as the, the, the John Hendricks lyrics, which I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this on piano, I think. Am I going to do this on piano? Yeah, I'll do this on piano. Because it's just lovely. So, it's a very long form as well. That's the other thing about this particular song, it's a very long, it's a very long form. So... <laughs> These lyrics I like much more, so it's just about love in general as opposed to a person, a specific person. Here we go. Love is like a never-ending melody Poets have compared it to a symphony symphony conducted by the lighting of the moon but our song of love is slightly out of tune once your kisses raised me to a fever pitch now the orchestration doesn't seem so rich seems to me you've changed the way you used to sing like the bossa nova love should swing we used to harmonize our song in perfect time but now the song is different and the words don't even rhyme cause you forgot a melody a heart would sometimes croon and what good's a song that's slightly out of tune? Turn your eyes to mine the way it used to be. Join with me in harmony and sing a song of loving. We're bound to be in tune. Before too long, there'll be no disaffinado. When your heart belongs to me completely And we won't be slightly out of tune You'll sing along with me Like the bossa nova, love should swing. We used to harmonize our song in, in perfect time. But now the song is different and the words don't even rhyme. Cause you forgot the melody a heart would sometimes croon. And what good's a song that's slightly out of tune Turn your eyes to mine the way they used to be Join with me in harmony and sing a song of loving We're bound to be in tune Before too long There'll be no disaffinado 
When your heart belongs to me completely And we won't be slightly out of tune You'll sing along with me You'll sing along with me You'll sing along with me I still remember the little soli part that Nick wrote for the for the sax. Such a ah, beautiful melody. And that was that was Nick's writing. Love it. Desafinado, slightly out of tune. Isn't it beautiful? Okay. Um <clears throat> next is a song called Triste. Which there used to be a person in the band that would always call it Trieste. Whenever we were playing this song for cocktail hour, he would always say Trieste. And I'd always be like, it's Trieste. Trieste is a different thing. That's a whole other, that's a different thing. This is Trieste. This is Trieste. Um, yeah, let's do this one on guitar. This is fun. So, Trieste means, uh, are we here? We're in the most lower camera, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're here. We're... There we go. Uh, Trieste means sad. So the song is a sad song, kind of ish. Yeah, it's from 1966, um, and what's doubly cool is Antonio Jobim not just wrote the music, but he wrote the lyrics. He wrote the lyrics both in Portuguese and in English. What? Yeah, he wrote the English lyrics as well, which I had no idea. Um, he wrote the song in late 1966. He was at the Sunset Marquee Hotel in Los Angeles. He was waiting for Frank Sinatra. He and Frank were supposed to have a meeting and talk about recording this seminal album that they ended up recording later on in that year. And while waiting for Frank, he, <laughs> he wrote Triste, which is insane. It's just so really, really cool. Um, he recorded an English language version in 1980 on the album Terra Brasilis. And that's where these lyrics are going to come from. So um, this also has a, a, a very plaintive but beautiful melody, which is simple. Uh, the chords are interesting. And it's just lovely. And again, I'm going to do both the English version and the Portuguese version. So apologies to any Portuguese listeners that are out there watching. Um, I hope we're all good. Are we? I, I should have asked earlier if we're all good volume-wise and everything. Everybody's happy in the chat? Everybody seems okay? Good. Yeah, all good. All right, wonderful. Many potatoes. Many potatoes. This is called, uh, I'm going to do finger style for this. This is called Triste. Sad is to live in solitude. Far from your tranquil attitude Sad is to know that no one can ever Live on a dream That never can be, will never be Dreamer awake, wake up and see Your beauty is an aeroplane So high my heart can't bear the strain A heart that stops when you pass by Only to cause me pain Sad is to live in solitude Triste viver no soledão Nador cruel já é um paixão Triste saber que ninguém pode viver de ilusão De nunca vai ser, nunca vai dar O sonhador tem que acordar Tu abeleja um avião Geme por um pobre coração Que para pra que vê passar Só pra maltarar Triste viver na soledade Sad é 
as to live in such solitude. Far from your tranquil attitude Sad is to know that no one can ever live on a dream That never can be, will never be Dreamer awake, wake up and see Your beauty is an aeroplane A heart that stops when you pass by only to cause me pain Sad is to live in solitude He does a neat thing quarterly, even though the melody is the same, the second half. You have this nice B to, to a major seven. And the first time you have this sad is to live in solitude. And then the second time it's your beauty is an aeroplane. So instead of playing this sort of alternate secondary dominant thing which I don't want to get into what that is but it's, that's weird it's just lovely just subtle changes subtle changes second time's a little bit different a little bit different chords are a little bit different keeps you again sort of that pump that push and pull that pumping and unpumping really really lovely okay we got one more for you folks this was really fun to do um, these tunes are you know them and yet they're they're a challenge because they sort of they sit they sit in a place which is difficult sometimes. So finally, I'm going to do a song called Wave. Wave, which is known as Vute Contar in uh, Portuguese. Um, also, sort of the, one of the most famous things. E English lyrics also written by Jobim from 1967. Um, Sinatra did this, did this. According to uh, a jazz disco discography, this song has been recorded nearly 500 times. 500 times. So let me, what I kind of realized while I was doing this, again, to, to reveal the simplicity of what, the complex simplicity of what Joe Beam's doing, in a weird way, this is almost like a blues. Again, with these sort of secondary dominance. A secondary dominant is like a, is like a chord from another scale that you use to, as a, to do a job in the scale you're in, which it shouldn't be able to do, but it does. That's kind of a very simple way to explain it. But... Um, so you, you know this tune. So so close, so close your eyes. So, so uh, let's see. So 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 close your eyes, for that's a lovely way to be aware of all the things your heart was meant to see. Da 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 dee da 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 ba dee da 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 do dee da ba ba. Right? That's the tune. It almost works as a blues. If you think of this as a D minor sort of blues. Or a D blues. Sorry. Oh, I'm messing it up. I'm messing it up. This was working before. It's a weird one four five with a lot of sort of secondary substitutional chords, which are not nearly as cool. I mean, the blues thing would be not nearly as cool as it ends up being. I'm gonna stop chatting because I've talked myself into a hole because I'm so excited to do these tunes. But this is uh, from 1967, song number seven for our little seven songs here. Um, this is called Wave. Let's see if I can do the intro here. So 
lovely waiting for me, me. Oh, well, where of all the things your heart was meant to be? The fundam fundamental loneliness goes. Let's try that again. I'll do it on guitar. Screw it. <laughs> Here we go. lovely way to be aware of things your heart alone was meant to see the fundamental loneliness goes when never two can dream a dream together you can't deny don't try to fight the rising sea don't fight the moon the stars above don't fight me The fundamental loneliness goes Whenever two can dream a dream together When I first saw you It was half past three When our eyes met It was eternity But now we know The wave is on its way to be just catch the wave, don't be afraid of loving me. The fundamental loneliness goes when never two can dream a dream together. That's a lovely way to be Oh, well, aware of all the things Your heart alone was meant to see The fundamental loneliness goes Whenever two can dream their dreams together You can't deny Don't try to fight the rising sea Don't fight the moon, the stars above And please don't fight me Fundamental loneliness goes whenever two can dream a dream together. When I first saw you, it was half past three. When our eyes met, it was eternity. But now we know the wave is on its way to be. Just catch the wave, don't be afraid of loving me. The fundamental loneliness goes when never two can dream a dream together. so much for listening and watching don't forget all the fun stuff that's coming up go to georgerob.com you can like this page you can subscribe too because that's fun to do thanks to joe beam for being so awesome thanks to Ms. Information for being so awesome and thanks to all of you for being so awesome Money, da, da. that's it episode 32 thank you much Stay safe, safe, everybody. See you at the gigs. And see you online. And see you in my dreams. Good night. Yay. Bye, everybody. Thank you.